Hey guys, thanks for watching. This is Tara with Mystic Eve. I being Mystic Eve, because I'm a mystic. I have books published on Amazon, hashtag Mystic Eve. Um, basically they're spiritual texts that I've written since I was 14. Um, I've always been a seeker, I've always been a mystic. Um, and I've always had a very good compass. I became a tattooist and was a tattooist um, for, oh gosh, I've been tattooing now almost 30 years. So, and in the past five years, I've been holding space called Center of Mystic Arts here in Costa Rica. It is a temple for the inner child. It is an esoteric school of art and divination. I can do astrology readings that are very unique. I can do astrologically charged tattoo designs. Um, which is what I do when I go on tour. I go to your house, work with you with astrology and tarot, and design your tattoo and give you a tattoo. Um, I'm also on Patreon. I need to get better at advertising myself. I'm also a hermit who likes to spend time alone, even though I also like to share space with a few people, specific people, people who are also into magic and esoteric knowledge. So there's a lot that I have to offer. I have a link tree. I'll put the links below. And please feel free to make comments and let me know what you think about the reading if you read a card differently, or if you have an inspiration, um, if you have any questions or requests, let me know. So, getting on with it. Let's see what the cards have to say today. This is my dragon deck. I always use this deck for this channel. What kind of messages does the divine have for our followers? Okay, center, north, south, east, west. In the center, what is this all about? <clears throat> Interesting that it's a number nine. Nine of wands. The number nine always makes me think of the hermit. It is a number of completion, but not yet transcendence. It's the end <clears throat> of the numbers before it reaches 10. Wands is fire. This is a card that speaks of completing something that we're passionate about. Nine is also the number of 
the Assad and the moon. So what is this about? This is about Practicing alone. This is about having the space for solitude and quietness to be able to explore your passion, your fire, to build your fire. This is, fire is sexual energy. It's building your prana. We talk a lot about awakening the kundalini snakes and awakening your sensual passions and pleasures. And it definitely brings in Tantra. Now, Tantra is an interesting subject because it's always been something that I've looked into. I haven't read a thousand books on it, but what I have read, I understood deeply. And here recently, I watched a really good video by, by Spirit Science, and Patch does an amazing job. I'll definitely, I think I know how to do the link in the video. Anyway. Understanding that Tantra can be solitary. You can work on your own sexual passions alone as a hermit until you are ready and comfortable enough and secure enough in yourself that you can start sharing this with others. Really, that's what the message is telling me is that when you get into kundalini magic, kundalini yoga, looking into tantra, understanding that you need that space to be able to work on yourself. You need that solitude to work through things and to be able to stand alone without any external support. Um, because what ends up happening is when you start practicing when you're not ready and you start practicing with other people, you become very erratic because the other energies in the room affect you and you're not able to stabilize yourself. Okay? So in the north, what is in the air, what's really being thought about or what we should think about when it comes to this fire hermit and it's the king of swords. Now, the king of swords is very refined and dignified. A sword is also air, so he's a thinker. And a sword is forged so it is created with heat and pressure as opposed to the wand which is also an active sign but the wand is also a club which you just pull out of a tree as opposed to a sword which is made and the King of Swords uses a lot of 
mind calculation, okay? You can think of a chess player, um, the king in chess, um, making your, taking each move very carefully. You know, when you're playing chess, unless you're playing speed chess, that image of a chess game taking all night because you're looking at every single piece and you have to calculate all the different moves that you can make. The king is a ruler of his people and to make decisions for his people, he has to think very carefully. King is also the sacred masculine. So he's a kinetic force. He's a kinetic ruler. He's a ruler of action. So we're clearly thinking about our actions, our choices, and this specifically is telling me to make each choice only after looking at all the different perspectives. You know, changing perspectives is what gives you that 3D look. You can examine every angle of a problem or situation and how you can come at it in a way that's successful. All right, so what's in the ground? What's in the south? What is grounding this king, this hermit, this ruler? It's the six of swords. It's interesting that we have a 69 here, a 69 and a king. <laughs> I like that. And we have fire in the middle and air on the top and the bottom. So the number six brings about the sacred balance, Tifereth, beauty, confidence, the sun, grounded in the Christ center. Very important when working with the Kundalini snakes. because they are very powerful and there's always the opposite force. So if you want to be a light warrior and you want to be a healer for other people, You have to ground yourself in the Christ. Not Christianity. The Christ center. The holy... Yeah, it is a holy trinity. It's all of the religions all wrapped up in a big burrito because they're all so good and they're so yummy, especially when you put them together. Big religious burrito and you throw out the dogma, right? Um, <laughs> yeah, I like that. Grounded in air. And when you're grounded in air, you can fly because you aren't grounded.
It's the feeling of the air underneath a bird's wings. They're grounded in air. They're not grounded to the earth. It's flight, taking flight, which you can do if you study ancient esoteric knowledge. It can happen. So what we have in the east, the holy direction where the sun returns to us, where humans have been praying for centuries upon centuries. What do we have in the east? Shedding light on this spread is the two of swords. So it's another air, which is really interesting. And it's the two. <sighs> Number two, Uranus, Hachma, wisdom. It also speaks of balance and of accumulation from the center to something else. It's communication. Oh, that's a good one. Want to do tantra with somebody? Communication is the key to your success. Um, Communication with your higher self is really important as well. Knowing that you are secure enough that you can stay focused on Tiferet while doing Kundalini magic or work. The focus is really important because when, you, when you're not focused, you get swept up in the fiery passion of the senses, which is, there's power there. We're using that, but you can't focus on that. You have to keep your focus and your compass on the sun the center of the solar system. So in the West, at the end of the day, what do we got? <laughs> the next fire, and it's a six as well, um, which now we have literally 69 red from left to right in fire. Now, the difference between this six and the six that is grounding us, so we also have a 66, is that air and that fire. Whether it's passionate energy or thinking energy, intellectual energy. Because I definitely know that when you get swept up in passion, you're definitely not thinking straight. <laughs> I have experienced that myself. Um, your brain just goes completely and like, what was I thinking? And hindsight, that's a common question that you ask yourself what the hell was I thinking when I did that um, at the end of the day we're crawling in bed with the passion okay that is definitely the the workshop here with kundalini yoga and magic and practice but it has to be balanced with our mental capacity 
to really rule, there's where this king in the air comes from, rule our minds. Keep that focus so that we don't lose our heads. We don't make bad decisions. So that we can still communicate even through the passion. Now that's a key. In the depth of passion, you have to still, well, I mean, you know, have to, you don't have to do anything I say, or anything anybody says, but to have this tantric power, energy, to work with these energies, you have to be able to still think and use your mind while the fire is raging around you. Also very interesting, let's take that away from sex and let's look at war. Is that too big of a jump for you, war and sex? I mean, you know, I do have a close association with Mars. So for me, it's not that much of a jump, but <clears throat> esoterically, nothing exists except light frequency and vibration anyway. So when you're on a battlefield and all of this fiery energy is around you, you still have to be able to think about all of your pieces. This is where the king is coming in. You're on your horse. That even makes it more crazy because I know how to ride horses <clears throat> and I also am a dressage rider so this is the art that was created for war so you're doing pee-offs and passage to try and kill your enemy to the left and to the right and lavades and all of these dressage moves you're controlling a horse in the middle of a battlefield, think about the mental power you would have to have to actually accomplish your goal and to win, right? So, that's the card spread for today. Uh, it was kind of heavy, it was kind of deep, but I am living in a temple of the inner child so, if you're interested in any more, please check out my links below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You know, those algorithms really help out a lot. I'm also on Patreon. I have a lot to offer. Check it out. Thanks for watching. Ciao.